Yo, what's up, 5M community? It's your Brave here, and welcome to my brand new channel dedicated to all things QB Core. If you're just starting out with 5M and QB Core, buckle up because I'm here to be your guide through the entire process. We'll cover everything from setting up your server to creating custom scripts and making your RP dreams a reality. No matter where you're at in your QB Core journey, I'm here to help you make the most of it. So hit that subscribe button, smash that notification bell, and let's get started. To kick things off, let's download some essential software. The first one we'll grab is Visual Studio Code, or VS Code for short. This powerful code editor is my go-to choice for working with code. It's packed with features that make coding smoother and more efficient, and I've found it surpasses other editors I've tried. It's already downloaded for me, so I am just canceling it. Next up is MariaDB. We utilize this software to establish a connection between our server and a database allowing us to store all our progress on the server. You might encounter various versions during the installation process, so don't get bogged down by the specifics. Just download and proceed. Now let's patiently wait for the download to complete. Once the download is complete, open the MariaDB file. Upon opening, click Next, then proceed to accept the agreement by clicking Next again. In this section, be sure to select HeidiSQL, as this is the software we require for running and managing our database. Click Next once more. Now pay close attention to this crucial login screen. I recommend setting the password as root and enabling access from remote machines for the root user. On the next screen, there's no need to make any changes. Simply click Next, click Next once again, and patiently wait for the software installation to be completed. The next step involves downloading the server base with 5M. To do this, Follow the link provided in the video description. Keep in mind that the file name may vary due to constant updates. I recommend selecting either the optional, latest, or the version specified at the top of the page when you watch this video. After downloading, create a new folder named 5M. Inside that folder, create another one called Artifacts. Open the Artifacts folder, download the zip file, and once downloaded, unzip the files into this folder. You can then delete the zip folder and check for the presence of the FX server. Before opening it, make sure to visit the 5M website and confirm that it is linked to CFX. If not, go to form ccfx.re. Sign up. I usually use Google for signing up. And once your account is created, return to 5M. Click on Link and authorize your account. Now go back to the Artifacts folder and open the FX Server file. When you open FX Server, your server terminal will pop up, containing a code to link your account with TX Admin. After linking and authorizing TX Admin, you will be redirected to the TX admin login page. Set a secure password and proceed. Once your account is created, you'll be taken to the foundation of the server. Here, you need to enter the server name. Please note that this won't affect your actual server name in 5M. It's just for your comfort in TX admin. In the deployment type, you'll find four options. Existing server data is used when you have files from another already built server. I'll cover all these options in future videos, but for now, we need the popular recipes. Now in the templates section, you'll see four different frameworks. Although I'll cover videos on all frameworks in the future, let's proceed with the QB core framework for now. Ensure the download path is correct, leading to the folder you created and directed to the TX admin folder. Once everything is set, 
go to the recipe deployer. This is a crucial step, so make sure to listen carefully. Once you click Next, you'll move to the Input Parameters section where you'll need to insert the license key. Don't worry, it's a free license key from CFX. Follow these steps. Go to Keymaster, sign in with your CFX account. After signing in, it will display all your active servers. If you don't have any, register a new one. Remember, you can only have three active servers at a time. Choose the display, which can be either localhost or your server name. This is mainly for identifying the server and the license key. For the next step, go to Google and type What's MIEP to get your IP address. Once you find your IP, go to the CFX page and paste the IP. Select the server type as home hosted and fill in the other sections as well. Since we're currently on a local host setup, the key doesn't matter. However, when starting a real server, never give out the key to anyone. Once the key is used, the IP will be locked with that key, ensuring security. Copy and paste the license key in the designated section. If you attempt to run the recipe, it might show a database error because we didn't fill in a subsection of the license key. Everything in this section is filled automatically, except for the database password. Go to the database password section and type the password you inserted. Mine is root. Now, the recipe should work. In this process, it will download the QB Core framework scripts, which takes two, three minutes. Once completed, it will open the folder with resources, or you can open the 5M folder you created. Make sure you have a server.cfg file, as it's the mother for all scripts. When you open the resources folder, you'll see the default scripts you need to run a basic server. Going back to the browser, click Next, and you'll see the option to edit the server.cfg file. While I usually don't edit it through the browser, I'll show you what it contains. Here, you can set your server name for the public, determine the server slots for players, specify the database for saving data, and configure admin permissions for players, which I'll cover in my next video. For now, let's save and run the server. Now that your server is ready and up for playing, let's explore the server terminal or console. This is where we can find errors related to scripts and various features. I'll provide an overview of some basic settings and features for now, and I'll create a detailed video explaining all the features of TX Admin in the future. Dashboard. This is where you can check the server status and have control to start, restart, or stop the server. Additionally, you can set announcements or kick players. Players. Section here. You can find the names of players and take actions such as banning players for their actions. Whitelist section. This feature allows you to whitelist certain players to the server. I'll explain the rest of the features in detail in future videos. Before we dive into playing on the server, Let's set up the database in HIDISQL to ensure our progress is saved without any interference. Follow these steps. Go to the taskbar search and type HIDISQL to open the application. If you see there are no active sessions, create a new session. All the details should be filled automatically. You just need to type the database password and save the session. Open the session you created. On the left side, you'll see the database files. Check for the QB Core Framework. If it's there, everything is set up perfectly till now. Heidi's QL and database setup are extensive topics, and I'll cover them in detail in future videos. For now, it's important to ensure everything is working, and we'll delve into the details in subsequent tutorials. For now, let's go inside our play server and start enjoying the experience. If you followed all the steps correctly, you'll see the Connect to Desktop option below the Play button. Click on it. If you're not on the appropriate game version, it will prompt you to switch to it. This process will take some time, so sit back and relax. After the upgrade, the 5M application should restart and open automatically. Do not click anything in the meantime. I'll speed it up for you guys. Ta-da! We're on our loading screen. I know, I hate this loading screen too, but don't worry. We're going to customize it in the coming days and provide you with some free scripts. Fill in the new player details and see yourself entering the game.
If you've made it, congratulations. You've officially created a QB core server yourself. Go ahead, mess around with some citizens. Tomorrow we're going to learn how to give admin powers to another user and how to use the admin menu in detail. Until then, see ya! As we sign off for today, remember to hit that subscribe button for more content, and feel free to share your questions or thoughts in the comments below. Your engagement means the world to us. Until next time, happy gaming, and see you in the next tutorial.